Well, thank you for uh, hosting this fine event uh, today. My name is uh, Bill Gillette, and I'm the founder of Lodge Lube. And uh, Lodge Lube is a company based out of uh, Fort Collins with an office in uh, Laramie at the University of Wyoming as well. And uh, I'm here to talk about, uh, very specifically, a uh, intelligent fuel management system. We've branded it uh, Smart Fuel. And uh, this presentation is going to focus on one of the multiple markets that we've identified, very specifically the mining market. And why mining? Uh, well, very clearly, as you'll see from the presentation, uh, just north of us in Wyoming, there is a, about 200 million gallons of diesel fuel consumed annually, just to support uh, predominantly the northeast part of Wyoming in the coal industry. Now that 200 million gallons represents um, well over a half a billion dollars worth of fuel. And just to put it in perspective, just a little bit north in the Bakken region in North Dakota, uh, there's uh, twice as much diesel fuel consumed just to respond to the, uh, the, the boom in the oil and gas. So actually about 0.9 billion gallons. And so with that, uh, those two markets, oil and gas and coal, uh, it represents uh, um, in excess of one and a half billion. The opportunities for actually managing that fuel, when I say managing, uh, efficiently using it, making sure that uh, every drop that goes into the engines uh, goes into horsepower out the, out the axles, um, that we could reduce the emissions. Uh, there's lots and lots of benefits that we'll get into in detail here. So, just to set the stage, mining, specifically diesel fuel management, and um, stick with this and I'll, I'll walk you through. So again, uh, we're a pre-startup. Uh, we started uh, essentially, uh, well we sent the corporation or the LLC in July of last year and actually uh, uh, received our first funding from some private sources in October. Uh, I've been at this game of uh, product design and development for uh, well over 30 years now. Uh, mechanical engineer, serial entrepreneur, lots of startups, uh, started and sold businesses uh, in New York State, Chicago area, and here in Colorado. Um, again, as I mentioned, very specifically, focus, 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 going after the mining marketplace. And as illustrated, uh, uh, the upsides are oil and gas operations predominantly drilling and hydraulic fracturing. Uh, again, the application is to create an autonomous, real-time monitoring system for the consumption and delivery and treatment of diesel fuel. Not gasoline, not natural gas, but very specifically diesel fuel. We are going to be providing what's called edge computed big data. So edge meaning the data is actually generated right at the, at the point of measurement and then the uh, algorithms, custom software is, is actually applied to that data right there at the edge, edge of the network. So we don't have to stream up via expensive satellites and mobile phone networks and so on raw data, you know, big, big raw data. We can actually beam mm -hmm. up uh, cal calculated results or computed results of the data and then it becomes actionable at that point versus sending it to a database and then hoping someone goes through and sifts through all the data and, and makes some sense out of that, that, that big bucket of data. Uh, with that, we can actually do what's called predictive analytics. So if we have this giant data set with a big N sample size, we can actually predict out behavior. And so in the case of diesel fuel, when you're talking about nearly $2 billion, It'd be nice to know if your consumption is above or below, the consumption rate is above or below accepted thresholds and tolerances. And then of course, um, uh, and I'll get into this, our business model is actually, uh, it's actually threefold. Hardware, a data subscription for software, and then also taking a commission or royalty on the uh, diesel fuel treatments that we meter and actually uh, inject into the uh, stream of, of diesel fuel. So it's, it's hardware lease, it's data subscriptions, and it's royalties on, on consumables. So it's a threefold. Uh, again, uh, I'm, the, um, I'm the founder president. 
Uh, I'm in charge of basically the vision, business strategy, uh, head up design and engineering. And then um, I'm very lucky to have uh, partnered up with some very big heavyweights within the mining industry. Uh, examples. Uh, this uh, Roger Conant, who is uh, recently with uh, uh, P&H. P&H is the largest manufacturer in the world of giant drag lines and the big shovels and so on. Uh, $150 million per machine type of equipment. Uh, he also has been uh, with Terex Mining. Terex is a competitor to um, uh, Liebherr, Caterpillar, the big haul truck manufacturers. Uh, he was in charge of uh, uh, operations for Terex North America. And then, of course, he's been with uh, second in command, actually head of operations for Thunder Basin, the largest coal mine in, um, I think, in North America. Roger is uh, he's based in Gillette, Wyoming. And uh, he's, his role is, is basically, he's, he's the guy on the ground uh, with, and responsible for customers, making sure we understand customer needs, and also will be in charge of uh, operations of getting product into the, uh, into the market space. We also have quite a decorated board. Uh, our, um, our chairman of the board is uh, Jim Harikoff, uh, as indicated, uh, executive vice president of uh, Arco Global Mining. Uh, and uh, under that post, he was in charge of mining operations uh, in South America, Australia, and of course uh, here in North America. His last uh, post at Arco prior to leaving was to be the president of the Thunder Basin operation, 140 some million tons of, of coal per year. He now is president and CEO of the largest uh, talc mine in business with um, two other uh, individuals who are a steep in the oil and gas market. Both Jim and Roger have been past presidents of the Wyoming Mining Association and are both permanent board members as well. In fact, uh, Roger, uh, just as of June of 13, uh, recently uh, just finished his post as, as president. Then, of course, I've got uh, three others. I've got uh, um, Deej Reardon, p &H Global General Manager. Um, Karen Suhak is a very, very strong uh, data scientist, and she's created a uh, $200 million company that's now owned and run by IHS in Denver. Uh, Rob Gornick is a uh, software geek wireless, security, etc. Without belaboring, uh, we're basically solving several problems within the marketplace. Uh, I've got them broken down into five key areas. Fuel treatments, things like anti-gels, uh, lubricity, uh, those sort of treatments that uh, focus on performance, life of engine. Uh, fuel delivery, believe it or not, $1.5 billion worth of diesel has been purchased it does not mean $1.5 billion of fuel has been delivered. Fancy that. It could be off uh, 10, 8, 5%. Even 1% is a giant number. Uh, also, fuel security. No surprise as well, about 15% of the fuel that ends up in the field never sees an engine in the field. It ends up in a lot of those uh, F-250s driving around. Fuel consumption. Wouldn't it be great to actually have a, uh, an iPhone app or a tablet app where you could see every single operation and where the fuel is consumed, then rank those uh, by consumption rate, and then identify those particular engines or applications where it's outside of a threshold. Maybe there's an issue with the engine, injectors are blown, needs to be tuned, etc. Then lastly, uh, engine health. If we could track the engine's fuel consumption over time relative to the fleet of equal engines, manufacturing model and age, we could actually call those out and use that data for a, a predictive maintenance indicator or metrics. Therefore, rather than arbitrarily at 18,000 hours because Caterpillar says so, take the engine out of service, spend a half a, billion, half a million dollars and, and rebuild it, maybe leave it in service for 19 or 20 or 24,000 hours, since that in, that truck actually supports almost a half a million dollars a day in production. So you don't necessarily want to pull it out for three weeks while you while you rebuild it uh, and lose that, uh, that that opportunity. 
Uh, then we've got, uh, of course, going along with uh, customer pain, as I've just indicated, we've got uh, uh, engine failures, uh, the lost productivity, as you mentioned, $400,000 a day for these, these haul trucks. Um, and it goes on and on to fuel cost, engine life. The product is actually hardware and software, and we're combining, uh, actually combining this fuel, third party fuel treatment with our <coughs> custom hardware and software, and it ends up in a, uh, in a tank. These are a lot of the benefits of uh, fuel treatments. We don't purport to be a dealer or distributor for any of them. We basically have to be agnostic to this and let that decision be that of the, uh, our customer. Value proposition, very, very clearly, we save fuel, reduce maintenance, extend engine life, we provide uh, uh, an intelligent fuel management uh, platform. We can uh, let the uh, mine operations optimize, increase revenue. This is a biggie in the mine is we can reduce particulate uh, emissions, i.e. carbon and so, and so on. We've done some case studies that show that uh, essentially for a 10 truck fleet, there are 500 within the fleet in, in Wyoming, for a 10 truck fleet, we can reduce almost four million dollars a year and 78 tons of, of carbon emissions. Lots of benefits. Here's an example of, uh, of the fleet uh, from a GPS perspective. The market is these large trucks. Uh, you can see that the, all different sorts of brands, mostly Caterpillar and, uh, and Liber. And this is, uh, this is an example. At ten dollar and eighty cent a ton coal, uh, it's, it's nearly $400,000 a day in, in value. Again, here's the 165 million, uh, 1,200 gallons a day. This is a typical way to uh, uh, put uh, additives in. We've done a value chain uh, uh, analysis to see exactly where all the decisions are made for actually getting the additives in. That's the key to it. And then here's our products. It's a skid with a metering system, with an additive tank, uh, a pre-filter to take particles and water out, and then security. And we also can uh, beam all, the, uh, all the, the data that's been collected from the, uh, the, the meter or the fuel meter system up to the internet, back to this uh, uh, handheld uh, database. The, fuel, the additives get replenished either with uh, these uh, individual totes or it could actually be pumped in from um, uh, uh, larger tanks. Here's a, uh, another rendition which is the same application on the end of this skid but now it's completely integrated into a 10,000, 20 or 30,000 gallon tank and this actually gets uh, sighted uh, at a mine, multiple locations within a mine. So the haul trucks at 0.4 million gallons, uh, uh, 0.4 million dollars per day uh, aren't driving to the gas tank, but the gas tank's near them. So the, uh, their productivity goes up. And then, of course, here's details about, uh, uh, about this fuel depot. Also, it's self-powered with a generator to power the uh, communications. Here's a unique part of our intellectual property that we patented, and it's a, it's a dashboard. It's a predictive analytics dashboard. We can see the uh, his history of what's happening. We can predict when... Uh, uh, how many days before before we run out? Here's kind of a real-time dashboard, and here's a data plan from an IT point of view of actually uh, how the uh, the data flows. Quick financials: we've broken it down into pricing for hardware, for data, for security. It's about $4,100 per unit, and actually it's uh, uh, more for the uh, the larger units. It's about a uh, we're going to bring this up to about a $10 million business just on lease within the first several years, plus fuel treatments, and a grand total of uh, two, five, eight, and 11 million over the next four years, just in one market, just in a handful of customers. And a manufacturing strategy, basically we're gonna make in Colorado and Wyoming, uh, the electronics, Colorado-based, and uh, servers and software, also Colorado-based. And that's all I've got for you today. Thank you.